In this video, I'm going to be talking about some effective strategies that will help you with your classroom management. Teaching can sometimes be very difficult and frustrating. Whether you are teaching first grade or the adult learner, there are always going to be those days where you wonder why you do it. But by following a few simple steps, you can have a more successful relationship with your students and a successful term. So I will be discussing three easy steps to follow so you can have success in the classroom. These steps are setting the classroom tone, setting expectations, and handling headwinds. Let's first take a look at setting the classroom tone. Setting the classroom tone begins with having an effective syllabus. This is the first opportunity to get your students involved in the course. The syllabus should be used to not only set the game plan for the course, test schedules, and expectations, but also be used as a first opportunity to set a two-way communication process with your students. This gives them buy-in in the process, makes them feel involved, and like they own the class. They will be engaged from day one, and this will set that involvement for the entire term. Let's look at some ways to effectively use the syllabus. First, let's look at course objectives and assignments. This shouldn't just include the basic information, what chapters to read, when assignments are due, test dates, etc. Instead, it should include a rationale for course objectives and assignments. A syllabus can be used to set the stage and the context for the course and where it sits within the discipline. It helps to be intentional about what is and isn't included in the course and then share that with students. Why are these assignments a part of the course? Why are we studying this particular topic or a few questions you'll want to address? You will also want to allow students to have input with decision making. Suggestions might include allowing input and decision making for assignment weights and options. This type of input would be specifically impactful for adult learners, especially those at Franklin. You will also want to provide an opportunity for students to set teacher expectations. Ask students what they expect of the teacher. A suggestion would be to have your students break into groups to discuss past learning experiences and offer one or two policies that they think will help them learn. You also will want to include helpful hints for success. Every syllabus includes a course calendar, but a learner-centered syllabus could also provide guidance on how to tackle specific projects, from how much time something will take to strategies for gathering the necessary resources. You will also want to include how to avoid pitfalls, giving students somewhat of an advance notice of areas of the coursework that has traditionally been more difficult for other students or take up a lot of time will help the students understand that you are looking out for their best interest and you genuinely want them to succeed. Now let's take a look at setting expectations within a course. By setting expectations early in a course, you can help avoid pitfalls later in the course. Students should have a clear understanding of their responsibilities. At Franklin, these responsibilities are clearly provided to students. We will discuss a few components of these responsibilities. It will be important to set expectations with communications. Students should plan to communicate with their teacher and with other classmates regularly throughout the course. This can be done with a variety of tools including online meetings, emails, phone conversations, and in-person meetings. Next, it is important to communicate the time commitment. It will be important to explain the approximate amount of time it will take to complete the course activities. Planning and time management are essential for anyone taking balanced learning classes. Students should contact their teachers if they are spending significantly more time than is estimated on assignments. It is also important to set expectations in terms of the code of conduct. A primary vision of Franklin University is to help each student become more effective by pr providing educational experiences that enhance intellectual abilities and career development. The university seeks to develop creativity, flexibility, and independence of thought so that students will be able to face challenges with confidence. For that mission to be achieved, the faculty and administration of the university must be able to carry out their respective responsibilities efficiently and effectively in an atmosphere free from disruption or intimidation. Finally, it is important to set expectations about class participation. The expectation of every course is that students will participate fully in all course activities, complete all activities on time, 
and finally take advantage of every opportunity within this course to learn and contribute to the learning experiences of others in the course. I am now going to talk about handling headwinds. I will focus on how to handle excuses from your students. It will be important to think through how you are going to handle excuses. You will first want to build trust up front. This is the cornerstone of an effective student-teacher relationship. Know they can be honest with you and not have to make up excuses along the way. If something is really going on in their lives that they are dealing with, then get to the root of that problem and build a plan together that will allow them to complete the coursework in an agreed upon time frame. Secondly, it is important you don't take it personally. Excuses are probably going to happen at some point, so please don't take it personally. Next, give them the benefit of the doubt. Typically, adult learners who are trying to advance their careers are not students who typically make excuses, so give them the benefit of the doubt. But if it is a repeated behavior, then start asking questions. Finally, trust and verify. Tell them you trust them, but you would like to see some sort of verification of the excuse. For example, was the roommate really sick and taken to the emergency room? Then there should be some sort of paperwork on that. In conclusion, if you follow these three easy steps, you will have success in the classroom.